hususu caminin bahanesi ve bugüne kadar içerisinden gelmiş geçmiş iman mezni kaynılarının ve kahve ehli imanın ervahı saygı sevk yapın senin hakkımızda Rabbana Hazretleri için Allah rızası için el Fatiha Euzubillahimineşşeytanirracim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Minnallah ve melaiketa ve şanun alem nebi ya yüllezin amin usallu aleyhi ve sellim o teslima Allahümme salli ala seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala ali seyyidina Muhammed Allahu ekber Allahu ekber Allahu ekber Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> يَتَقُوا اللَّهَ تَعَالَى وَتَوَكَّلُوا اللَّهَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ تَقَوَّلُوا الَّذِينَ هُمْ مُحْسِنُونَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَالصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَى أَشْرَفِ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ وَالْمُرْسَلِينَ سَيِّدِنَا مَوْلَانَا مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ All praises are due to Allah Lord of the universes O best protector O best helper forgive us our lord the ultimate end is to you there is no power nor strength except by Allah, the High, the Immense. Glory be to you. We cannot number your praises as you praise yourself. Your face is majestic and your honor is exalted. Allah does whatever he wishes by his power and judges what he wills by his might. We are at your service, Ya Allah, my Lord, and ready to obey. May the blessings of Allah, the kind, the most merciful, and the near angels, the prophets, the true, the martyrs, the righteous, and whatever glorifies you, O Lord of the worlds, be upon our master Muhammad ibn Abdullah, the seal of the prophets, and the master of the messengers, the imam of the people of taqwa, and the messenger of the Lord of the worlds, the witness, the bringer of good tidings. And may all peace and blessings be upon his noble family and blessed companions, especially upon the four Khulafai Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Usman Al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali Al Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. Ya ayyuhal mu'minun, O believers, welcome to you on this holy day of Juma, the third Juma of the holy month of Rajab Shahrullah. Today is the 17th of Rajab. More than half of this month of Allah has passed. And time is passing so quickly. This is a sign of the Ahir Zaman. As the Holy Prophet ﷺ said, the hour will not begin until time passes quickly. 
So a year will be like a month, and a month will be like a week, and a week will be like a day, and a day will be like an hour, and an hour will be like the burning of a braid of palm leaves. We are in such days. May we run with more determination and more love and passion to show respect to these days and to plant the seeds of obedience, submission and love that we take care of in Shaban and reap the fruits in Ramazan, inshallah Rahman. O believers, the days and nights are passing us by. And as they pass, a part of our life in this world is taken away. And when the number of the days that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for us finishes, we are going to pass from this world. We are going to die. That is the reality in front of every man. It is the inescapable truth for the children of Adam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in Surah Al-Baqarah, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, how can you disbelieve in Allah when you were lifeless and He brought you to life? Then He will cause you to die. Then He will bring you back to life and then to Him you will be returned. Sadaqallah al -Azim. Death is one of the signs of the power of Allah. It is one of the signs of the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over His creatures. He is saying in Surah Al-Mulk, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Blessed be He in whose hands is dominion, and He has power over all things. He who created death and life to test you as to which of you is best in deeds. And He is the exalted in might, the forgiving. Sadaqallah al -Azim. Death is a reminder to all of mankind that he is a creature and that Allah is the creator. Death is there to see if we are going to live this life as a good servant or as a bad servant. Death reminds us that this life, it is temporary and ahirat, it is forever. Once when Holy Prophet ﷺ was standing next to a grave and he began to cry. He said, Oh my brothers, prepare yourselves for this. And once a man came to the Holy Prophet ﷺ and said, Who is the wisest person, Ya Rasulullah? Holy Prophet ﷺ replied, The one who remembers death most often, and the one who is well prepared to meet it, these are the wise. Honorable in this life and dignified in the hereafter. An intelligent man is the one who understands that his life is of a limited time span. And he understands that the next life, it is eternal. And so he will use the time given to him in this life to prepare for the next. But the heedless man, he fools himself into believing that he's going to live forever. He doesn't want to hear the words, you are going to die. He doesn't want to think about his grave. He doesn't want to think about meeting his Lord and being judged on the day of judgment. He just wants enjoyment. And such a thinking, it is the height of foolishness. As Hassan, Hazrat Lari, Hassan al-Basri, Qadrasullah al-Sir is saying, how strange is this that a people whose departure from this world to the next has been announced and whose predecessors have already departed they still play around this is why the holy prophet gave the following advice to his sahabis once he walked by a group of companions and saw that they were laughing too loudly losing themselves he said Always remember, the destroyer of pleasures. Yes, death is the destroyer of pleasures. Because death puts everything into perspective. It reminds a man that those pleasures he is enjoying, they are not real. They are going to end one day. What is real is the death 
waiting in front of him. But the disease that has infected the whole world today, and it has infected the Ummati Muhammad والسلام, is that nobody wants to spoil their pleasures. In fact, the whole world is running to increase pleasures. And one of the great fitna that we see today is that the Muslims have abandoned saying that there is truth and there is falsehood. And they are running only after the pleasures of their ego. They are saying, we must accept everyone. We must accept every action. We must accept every intention. We must be tolerant of every action and intention. You are drinking. It's okay. We shouldn't judge you, they say. You are making zina and openly spreading it to whole world to witness. It's okay. We shouldn't judge you. You are tyrannizing others. It's okay. It's not okay to judge. They only become upset when someone stands up to say haq is haq and batil is batil. And the two, they are distinct. They run to condemn that person. But they are all allowing each other to sink in disobedience, saying, only Allah can judge, brother. Don't judge. Of course, Allah is the judge. But he sent the Holy Prophet والسلام, to be his warner. And Holy Prophet والسلام, warned us against what is evil. He said والسلام, in a famous hadith recorded by Imam al Nawawi, saying, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, that which is halal is clear, and that which is haram is clear. And between the two of them, are doubtful matters about which not many people they are knowledgeable therefore the one who avoids these doubtful matters certainly clears himself in regards to his religion and his honor but the one who falls into the doubtful matters falls into that which is unlawful like the shepherd who pastures around a sanctuary so that he is almost grazing inside Verily, every king has a sanctuary. And Allah's sanctuary are the things he has prohibited. In the body there is a morsel of flesh which, if it is healthy, all the body is healthy, and which, if it is diseased, all the body is diseased. This part of the body is the heart. So Holy Prophet والسلام, is linking, staying away from the haram with the health of the heart. If we stay within the limits that Allah has set for us and stay away from the gray areas, our heart will be healthy. If we play too much and try to be slick and try to come close to the haram areas, then that time our heart is going to be diseased and it's going to be unhealthy. And such a heart will not be acceptable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next life. We must listen to the advice of Hazrat Ali karamallahu wajh, who says, the thing I fear for you most is following desires and having long hopes for dunya. Following your desires blocks you from the truth and having long hopes makes you forget the hereafter. Verily, this worldly life is departing and the hereafter is approaching and each of them has its children. So be children of the hereafter not children of this world. Because today, there is a time to do good deeds and there is no judgment. But tomorrow, there will be reckoning and no chance to do good deeds. So the remembrance of death it is going to keep us on the Sirat al-Mustaqim. If we are remembering death, we are not going to take this dunya as a friend because we are never going to be comfortable in this dunya. We may have everything from this dunya. Allah may bless us with it, but never you're going to be comfortable or trusting of this dunya. We're going to know that there is another world 
the real world, the world we came from that is waiting for us. As Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anh, said, there is no comfort or rest for the believer until he meets Allah. And with that attitude, we will always be running to look where the pleasure of our Lord is because our goal will be to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, clean and pure. And there are men who live their lives in such a way that they are content and they are ready to meet their Lord. Now who are they? They are the awliyaullah. They are the friends of Allah who live with submission, they live with obedience, and they live with love and rahmat. So that in this world, in this world they find the pleasure of Allah. Those who have died before they died, those who have sacrificed in the way of Allah, if we want a clean end, then we must follow them and walk on their path because they know the road, the safe road to Ahirat. They know the safe road to the Holy Prophet And they know the safe road to reach to Allah. They are the ones that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala mentions how he will speak to them at the time they pass from the world, saying, O nafsul mutma'in, O soul that is at peace, return to your Lord, well pleased, well pleasing. Enter among my servants and enter my garden. Sadaqallah Nazim. The friends of Allah. They have received that call and they have been sent to this world to teach the people how to live so that they may also receive that call. The one who lives his life clean and pure, he will not fear death. He will look forward to death because for such a man, his death is not the beginning of his punishment. His death is the beginning of his reunion with the beloved. Just like Hazrat Bilal al-Habashi radiallahu an, when he was passing from this world, his wife was crying and saying, O oh, sadness, O oh, disaster. But Hazrat Bilal was saying, don't say such a word. Say, O oh, joy, O oh, happiness, because tomorrow Bilal will be with Rasulullah and his companions. O oh, believers, this is for you, this is for me. We must live in this life so that when we reach our end, we have that kind of faith and we have that kind of longing. This dunya is an enemy. You must treat it like an enemy. And when Muslims fall in love with dunya and become afraid of death, disaster will strike them. As Sahib al-Sayyif, Shaykh Abdul Karim al-Kabrisi, Rabbani, Qadazallahu Sir is saying, Muslims today are fearful of death. What kind of faith is this? What kind of faith is that you have fear from death? You have fear of reunion with your Lord, to go back to your Lord? What kind of faith is this? What is separating you from that? Isn't it this dunya? Isn't it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us, this dunya is a trouble to you? The love of dunya is a trouble to you? Isn't that what the Holy Prophet is saying to us? You are going to be so many in Ahir Zaman, but your enemies are not going to have any fear from you because you are going to have a sickness in you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to remove the haybat, the majestic look, the majestic powers away from you and your enemies are going to look at you. They are not going to have any fear from you at all. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, are they going to be very little in number? He said, no, the opposite. In numbers, my ummat are going to be so many. They're going to be so many of them, but they are going to fall into the love of this dunya. They are going to love dunya and they're going to hate death. They're not going to want to even hear about death. Is that what happened to the nation today? We must ask ourselves, and we will know by our own selves. Sit down alone in your room and ask yourself, do I have the love of dunya in my heart? Do I have the fear? Do I hate death? 
You will know by your own selves. You don't need anybody to tell you anything then. Don't blame me to say he's saying these words. I am checking myself all the time, 24 hours a day, to see if my heart is moving to dunya or ahirat. You must do the same. If you do it, then slowly, maybe the protection will come to you. Maybe the help will reach to you. When the awliya's help is reaching to you, slowly they remove that fear away. And they replace it with a different love into your heart. And that is the real love. Otherwise, dunya love it is only temporary and passing. And it is only giving trouble to mankind. O oh, believers, we are in the holy months. This is the time for us to fix our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the Holy Prophet والسلام, and with our Shaykh. Our life may be upside down, but they can fix it and put it back together easily with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaykh Effendi is saying, put some love in your heart and put some passion in your heart. For Allah's sake. Do things for Allah's sake. Run to do things for Allah's sake. Allah Jalla will fix your life. Your life it becomes perfect that time. Do things for His sake. Say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim for His sake. You will see that your work, your job, your life that is shattered everywhere. He will pull it together. We should make intention in these days of Rajab to live with passion, to live for Allah, to live for the Prophet and for our Shaykh. Inshallah, that time when we pass from this world, it will be a joy because we will be reunited with the ones that we love. Amen. Astaghfirullah. 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 لا إله إلا الله الكريم وتب الله لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك والحمد لكل شيء قدير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك والحمد لكل شيء قدير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك والحمد لكل شيء قدير لا إله إلا أنت سبحان إن كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحان إن كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحان إن كنت من الظالمين صبح كدوس ربنا رب الملائكة والروح صبح كدوس ربنا رب الملائكة والروح صبح كدوس ربنا رب الملائكة والروح إن دينا إلا الله السلام قام صلاة الله مسلم سبحان الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله